today we're going to be playing some Moonlighter Between Dimensions on PlayStation 4. I have played this game a little bit. I've made it through the first dungeon, but uh, I deleted all my saves so that I can start over fresh. Um, we're going to play on hard difficulty since it's recommended and essentially normal difficulty with normal being easy. Um, so this game is a very unique type of game. It's very reminiscent of Super Nintendo era graphics. Um, the controls are easy and fluid, and the gameplay is overall fun and fairly unique. Um, you can read along with it, but the overall story is uh, these five dungeons were discovered, and when they were discovered, both heroes and merchants came and built a town. Um, the heroes would explore the dungeons, they would find artifacts on their journey by defeating enemies, and come back and the merchants would sell them. Um, Eventually it got to a point where it was too dangerous, so they closed down all the dungeons and the town slowly began to die. You play the character Will, who is a merchant trying to revive his family's legacy and shop. And you can tell by the fact he's got a bandana that he is going to be a hero. All heroes have bandanas. Um, getting into it, it's... Um, the tutorial is, it's easy to go along with, um, not entirely necessary, it, it feels a little time consuming at times. So this is your start here, you're going to see we're thrown straight into a dungeon. And then up here you've got your little guide on exactly what the controls are and how to work. So you've got your roll mechanic. You can use it to roll over small to medium gaps. You can use it to roll through enemies without taking damage. And you can use it to roll through their attacks without taking damage. The combat is very straightforward. Um, I haven't ran into many things that have complex mechanics involved with them. So you, uh, you start with your handy push broom here. Um, throughout your journeys in the dungeons, you'll come across chests which have different artifacts within them. Um, as you get more in depth into the game, there's a little bit more stipulation on exactly what you can take and how you can take it. Um, your inventory is limited. Uh, the amount that I've played into it, I have not yet come up with a uh, inventory expansion such as a backpack or whatnot. The, um, if you die in a dungeon, you leave behind all the artifacts that you found in that dungeon. And as you can tell, with nothing but a push broom, there is absolutely no way to handle this as the enemies just keep spawning. So the goal here is to die and show you exactly what happens upon death. So you'll notice all our artifacts drop out, our inventory is empty, and then we get thrown out of the dungeon. Cue the old man coming to the rescue. Uh, so one of the, the unique things about this game is each dungeon is randomly generated with the exception of obviously the tutorial dungeon and the first time you enter the first dungeon. Um, it's a very very nice aspect um, as in your first attempt through a dungeon you will not be able to clear out the dungeon with the equipment that you have. So when you return to it a second time, it'll be completely new and essentially be like playing an entirely new dungeon. Um, there is some dialogue options, both with him and people in the town. I'm not sure if there are any side quests or special requests that are made. 
Um, basically, he's here to be condescending that you went into the dungeon and got your ass whooped. He's going to offer some helpful advice, such as grab your stuff and use your pendant to get out. Um, we're going to rip a line from Zelda here and get a sword and a shield. Um, there are different weapon types that I've come across. Um, you've got sword and shield, great sword. Uh, you've got a spear type weapon, a bow, and gloves, and I believe maybe one more. Um, so far my favorites have been the sword and shield and the great sword. So now he's going to go over the basics of the shop. Every day you can open your shop by coming down here, holding X, and opening it. So you will have people who actively come into the shop. They're going to review what you have for sale along with the pricing. So smiley face is the best reaction you can hope for. And it means you priced it perfectly. It wasn't too cheap, wasn't too expensive, and they were happy with it. This next one, you're going to notice he is um, considerably displeased with the price of it. And he's going to turn and walk out. So one of the unique things is the artifacts don't actually give you a set pricing. It's up to you to, de to figure out and determine what the best price is for each particular artifact. For that, you've got your artifact guidebook. So you can see 100 was a perfect price for it, 170 was way too much. Um, that's the limitations of the guidebook at this particular moment. And it does go a little bit more in depth after you're able to actually control the game. So now we're able to head back into the dungeon. So we will go and give that a shot. One of the unique mechanics of the dungeons are you have a pendant which will, in exchange for gold, allow you to exit the dungeon keeping all the artifacts that you've obtained throughout the journey. Very very helpful for get, getting into a pinch that you can't quite get out of and you don't want to die and lose everything. The mini-map style is uh, very similar to classic Zelda, where it's, it's broke off into segmented rooms, oftentimes closed by a door, that you have to defeat enemies in order to progress. Um, there are no real critical hits in this, although if you hit them with the third part of a combo, it does deal double damage which is really helpful to know when going up against harder enemies. Um, with your sword and shield, you can obviously block, and it takes all damage out. You can also roll through. Hitting L1 will switch between your weapons. Obviously, spears and pole arms are good for keeping enemies at a distance. Uh, another thing, some weapons, like the sword and shield, squares your shield. But by switching to the broom, you'll see that square is actually a power attack. So one of the keys to this is just knowing what weapon type to use, and when to use it. Also knowing the range of your attacks. Again, the Greatsword is probably my favorite weapon type, as it allows for large sweeping attacks. It's a lot of flavor text throughout the dungeons. You can sometimes find specific rooms that just have little tidbits, nothing 
overly story related, but it's still nice to have. It breaks up the monotony of just grinding through dungeons. Um, there are numerous different aspects of actually exploring the dungeons, which once we get through this initial introduction dungeon floor, we'll uh, kind of branch into the extra stuff. So now we've got our map. You can see there's four dungeons that are skull and key, meaning they've got a boss. Beating the boss unlocks a key to the next one. And then you've got the fifth and final dungeon. I've completed the first dungeon, which is more of a cave environment, and I have not yet started the second dungeon, so after this first initial run through, everything will be new and a little bit different. So at the end of your dungeon exploration every day, you are going to be put out of a portal and returned to town right outside your shop. Um, passage of time, I'm not really sure what the day-night cycle is, but it is possible to go into a dungeon and return out the next day. So your pendant with circle is what allows you to exit the dungeon. But it does cost gold. So if you don't have a gold and you immediately go back into the dungeon, you may find yourself in a rough way to go. Um, right now he's going over the town board. We'll go and examine that. So the, the town board is another unique feature and it adds a little bit of extra depth to the story and the gameplay. So you can see that we've got different vendors and shops that we can bring to the town for different amounts of gold. Um, the blacksmith is going to be our first goal because having better weapons and equipment is going to be vital for being able to successfully progress through the story. On the next page you see we can expand our shop and in the right hand side you'll see that the first the first expansion adds four more slots to sell. The second expansion adds extra slots but also another chest and so on and so forth. You've got sale boxes. Um, I'm not sure of the overall usage of this. Obviously it's a it's a discount based thing but I don't know if it will allow you to raise the overall price, sell it at a discount, and get increased sales on it. Um, your cash, cash registers here. Buying these customers will actually leave you a percentage based tip based on what they buy. Next up we've got beds. The different beds, sleeping in them will give you different bonuses and effects. And then, obviously, bonus storage for your shop. Um, one of the good things is the merchants you can bring in, such as the blacksmith and the potion crafter. You don't actually have to carry the items on you. They will take it out of your chest for crafting purposes. So we already know that our crystallized energy cells for 100, so I went ahead and upped it to 110 just to see if we could get some extra gold. You'll notice in your book there are lines signifying what the baseline price is. So you've got two gold down here. Scrolling up, you'll notice that hardened steel goes for at least 275. So you can do that and use those for the basis of your initial pricing. So, for example, we'll go with the Golem Core. So we know Crystallized Energy is 100, and the base level is 2 gold. So we are going to try placing the Golem Core at 75 gold and see if it will sell. Um, having played this a little bit, I do know that there are going to be some things that we need to have. Um, foundry Rests. 
fabric, iron bars, vines, roots, and hardened steel are going to be very important along with rich jelly in the early stages. So currently I'm not going to sell any of those. I believe I only need 300 gold to be able to teleport out. Um, so if we're going 75 on the golem core, let's try 65 for the water sphere. And then we are going to store the rest of this. And call it an end to the first day. So you'll see it is now daytime, January 3rd. Um, all this is is just a view of the map again. It takes all four keys to open the fifth gate. So we're going to open our shop and see how our pricing worked out. So with the pricing, it's uh, there's pros and cons. If you price something where they don't necessarily agree with the price, but it's not so much they won't buy it, you'll still make gold, but you run the risk of lowering the popularity of the item. Okay, so the gold in the eyes means that I drastically underpriced those, and they found it was a steal. So, unfortunately, you will do that a lot. You'll also overprice it a lot. And you can go from there to determine the best price. So, at the end of your sales day, you'll see everything you sold, how many of them, and what the total gold was per item and total. Over here, you'll see rising or decreasing popularity of items, so you know what to go for. Um, different floors of different dungeons have different rewards so also on this page you can see that we had six total customers into the shop and zero of the second icon which you will see at a later time so right now we have enough gold we could bring in the blacksmith but I don't want to do that yet in case I run into trouble. It's better to have the gold to be able to teleport out of the dungeon using the pendant. So now we've got our first unscripted, fully random gened dungeon. let us begin so there are different enemies um, a lot of your initial introductory enemies are basically just there to walk around and hit you um, the flying one however if something does drop it will come and pick it and attempt to run away with it um, breaking the pots doesn't always reveal artifacts but it is good to check them anyways so you'll see in our unscripted random gen dungeon the first chest we run into there is an additional icon on each artifact so the two vertical lines side by side means this item has to be placed on the right or the left side of the bag so it will not let you drop it anywhere else um, there are a few more types that we will get into as we come across them. So you'll notice certain enemies have different colors. They are classified as a different tier. Generally have higher hit points and do a little bit more damage. Um, if you kill something close to one of the gaps in the floor, it can and will fall through. And there's no way to get that back, so be mindful. 
try and make sure that you uh, are quick to grab anything important that may drop. The broom is incredibly weak, but it is very helpful in these earlier stages, especially against the golems. There are some additional hidden aspects of the dungeons. So, this green flashing right there, you're actually able to drop down which we will do momentarily. But what that does is it takes you to a... essentially a slime portal version of the dungeon's floor. Um, it's got different types of enemies in it. And a different type of floor boss. We will probably go that route for this first introductory dungeon, just so you can get a feel for it. But first we're going to clear out the rest of the floor and make sure we get all the artifacts that we can. So just like the vertical lines, you've got the horizontal lines. It has to be placed at the top or the bottom of the bag. Um, if you do get into a pinch, R2 is helpful, as it'll let you heal. Um, these are annoying. If they hit you, you will drop items, so it's best to just kind of roll, trigger them to take a swing, and then get out of your way. The, uh, the question mark artifacts here will not be revealed what they actually are until after the dungeon. So, it's really best guess on whether or not you should replace something currently in your inventory with one of them. So, unique to the Tier 2 enemies are the Power Crystals that keep dropping. They're going to be useful for enchanting weapons and armor to increase damage, defense, and HP through the Potion Maker. So you'll see here we've got our healing floor. This normally signifies that the floor boss is in the next room. Um, it does have limited amount of healing, so you will see that as you progress through and get more HP, you will be able to heal a lower percentage of your HP. Check our map here. So what we're going to do now is we are going to actually jump down in the hole and examine the portal area. So again, this just has a, uh, a different mob set within it. Uh, you will run into some of the same ones, but for the most part, they are relatively different. Um, the floor boss is also different than a standardized floor as well. Um, I haven't done a lot of these, so I'm not 100% sure exactly what their breaks are. Um, this is also a unique one. Uh, it destroys an artifact curse in the direction shown when placed. So what that means is we can either break the curse on an item being hidden or we can break the curse on an artifact that has to be placed in a certain location. Um, this will prove to be very helpful as there are times when, as you can see, that was fabric. So we can break the curse on that fabric and combine some of these to hopefully increase our space. 
uh, inventory management is a key to being successful in this. So when you're done, you can place them as so. So now you'll see we broke the curse on that and our items are now stacked. Um, these flame enemies are somewhat of a nuisance. You actually have to roll through them to incapacitate them in order to hit them. Not horrible, but if there's a lot going on, it can prove to be a problem. So, for right now, we are going to call this a stopping point, and we will continue the dungeon and exit it in the next playthrough. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.